is sponsored by the Retired Racehorse Project. So we are getting ready to do that. And I would like to bring Caitlin on. And we're going to talk about, before we get to how Caitlin was doing with her horse, we're going to get, we're going to ask you the question. Okay, Caitlin, are you ready? Hi, Caitlin. Hi. We were going to visit you in the stable today, but something happened. At yes, end, I'm right? so sorry. So I just got back um, last night from Kentucky and again, two day drive back. Um, and then we, um, we had a crazy storm this morning around 5 a.m. And so when I went to my apartment at the barn, I had no power. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's too uh, bad. Well, I'm glad that you're here. safe. It's about 100 degrees here. So I had to <laughs> come back to our place in Midtown and cool off <laughs> um, before hopping on. But hopefully we will get Charles on soon. Yes, that's right. So I just before we, we get to talking with both of you, uh, we here at Stream Horse TV, we'd like to see all your off the track thoroughbreds and retired racehorses of all breeds. So you can tag us on Instagram and Facebook with at Stream Horse TV and use the hashtag hashtag Stream Horse TV to be featured on the program. So we'd like to see and hear about all your retired racehorses, no matter the breed, maybe the standard breads. And I know there's some people out there who also race Arabians and quarter horses. And so we'd like to see them as well. Now, Sarah, we talked a little bit to, with you about uh, your familiar familiarity with thoroughbreds. And uh, we do have a picture of you on some of your thoroughbreds. We're just going to talk with Sarah about this. Oh, and here we're going to do this one here. This is you, one of your thoroughbreds. That's Silas. That's the horse I have now. I've had him for 10 years. Wow. So he's last off the track thoroughbred project. He was no longer a project. He's a turning into old man. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this. This, one this is, is me. on the third. This is on the track. Right. This is not an off the track thoroughbred. This is an on the track <laughs> thoroughbred. Um, when I was galloping in college, well, as a kid, it had been my dream to gallop race horses. And so uh, when I was in college, I transferred to the University of Louisville so that I could gallop in the mornings before class. So this was that, that's dedication, dream. man, getting up because they they don't gallop at ten a.m. Do they? <laughs> no, I. Uh, I, I haven't woken up that early consistently since then. I would actually finish work and I would call my boyfriend, fiance, who's now my husband, and he was not even awake yet. I would wake him up leaving work. To go to classes. To go to class. Great. I would yeah. be done work by my done with work by my 10 a.m. class. So. Okay, so while I've got you both here, there's something that we get asked quite a bit, and and it is uh, is who's going to get on the horse first? Who's going to sit on this horse that just arrived from the racetrack? I know that uh, this past winter, I've had a couple of, of off the track thoroughbreds and when they come off the trailer, they are they've been racing previous month, sometime the previous week. And I am not getting on that thing. Like <laughs> what, what do you say? Caitlin, who's getting on that thing first? So, I actually, ha we had a unique situation. Um, Charles got off the trailer perfectly fine. He'd been raced about two months prior and he, I, I would have hopped on except they said to give him about a week to acclimate. And during that week, he, um, he lost a shoe twice. And so we ended up going barefoot um, for a bit and he never really adjusted. So by the time we got him feeling better, um, <laughs> we were at the point where we were like, okay, well, you know, he's perked up a little bit. He's comfortable. Let's have our, let's have the assistant trainer hop on and see. But I, I had no issues really. I mean, he, he, he came off so quiet. He arrived and I, I mean, I literally had no fear of him, um, so it, it just, it depends on the horse, I think. Right. 
totally agree with you. And how <laughs> about he did you? Not come off the, he did not come off the trailer looking like an x-ray source. <laughs> he looked like he had just kind of like sauntered out of a pasture and, you know, he's yeah. always been a chill guy. They said he ate a ton of hay on the ride over and drank water. And, <laughs> and what about you, Sarah? Um, uh, you know, so who gets on your thoroughbreds first? Well, I've usually, by the time I get my thoroughbreds, they've usually come from, you know, an in-between. I've never right. taken them directly off the track. But since I rode them on the track, I really don't, I'm not that concerned. I mean, I try to let them have some time in the field. Um, I might lunge them first just to get the bucks out. But, I mean, who, you know, me, I guess, is who would do it. Like, it's just not a... They're, you know, they're horses, they're trained. They've had more experiences than any most show horse that I've ridden. They've been in a gate that explodes and bells ring. They've get groomed top to bottom. They've been around crowds of people yelling. They've, they've been around. And so I think most of the anxiety that these horses have is because we're nervous because yeah. it's off the track thoroughbred. So uh, oh, I just, they I, gallop I, and run yes. and they <laughs> run away. They're going to run away and they don't steer and they can only go one way and they only go straight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I, I just agree with you. Yeah. Head, like it's a horse and I can ride. So we're going to be fine. You know, I, I know too yeah. that, like you say, I like where you say that they have seen so much. And yeah. some of the things that you think that, oh my gosh, there's a car coming. There's a car. They've never seen a car before. Well, of course they have seen cars before. They've seen all, everything. They've seen everything and they, they, they know about stuff. Yeah. What, what I like about working with them is that when they see the saddle and bridle coming, they know they're working. And they, they, you can almost see their mind say, okay, we're going to work. And and once you get into the tag, it's work time. See, it's that took time. us a while to get there with Charles. That oh, was is not, that right? Well, but he was only raced once. Um, uh, and I don't know his full training background, but I can imagine that um, they – you know, he was only raced once because they saw that he was not going to be yes, a race He's got a case of the slows. My mom used yes. to say he's got a case um, of the slows. Yeah. So, so we had kind of like the opposite problem of, uh, of there being a, like a work ethic and, uh. and a motivation there. He was, you know, it's we would play get time. on the lunge line or get on this, you know, get a saddle on and he'd be like, what, what do you want me to do? <laughs> um, that's a little different for sure. Cause I, cause what, what I, what I've seen is that they, they know that something's going to happen. Like they, right. they know, okay, we're, it's work time. We got to do something here. What, what is it you want me to do? And it's not stand by the mounting block, <laughs> right? It's, right. it's one of the first things I think that you have to get them used to is to stand yeah. at the mounting block. See again, Charles, he's just, I, I worked with him doing showmanship when he arrived. And so I, okay. I taught him to square up before I ever sat on him, just kind of a holdover from my, my Western days growing up. And um, so now he just squares up at the melting block and <laughs> perfect. <laughs> He's, I, you I, have everything that people are like, this is like it, you know, this is what it's like to work with a, uh, a young off the track thoroughbred <laughs> pretty much opposite. No, no. Just change it 180 degrees and you got Charles. Yeah. How about you, you Sarah? The folks, you have to trust the folks. I think, you know, yeah. that goes a long way to at a um, new vocations where right. he came from because right. I knew what I was looking for and I told them, and I think they're very honest about how they, they match people up. And then of course um, the support that I've had at my barn, my trainers, my assistant trainer, and the head trainer, they love working with young horses, thoroughbreds, warm bloods. Um, so I have to give a lot of credit to them too. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Sarah, what about you? You teach your horse to stand at the mounting block. Is that something that you required to do with you your know, guys? It was something I required for a long time. And then we went through a phase where he was cold backed when I got on okay. and he felt like he was going to rear up if I didn't let him walk. And so um, I started letting him walk and now it's just what we do. It's like, I know it's the worst manners <laughs> ever, but it's, and I don't even, I can't get on if he stands. Like I need his forward momentum to move me. Yeah, and that'll to probably help you. 
Yeah. And um, so yeah, that's kind of a bad habit that I have. I know what you're talking do. about with you know with that. You kind of you kind of when you put your foot in the stirrup, you kind of think, okay, I know he's going to be two feet yeah. ahead of where he's going, so I have to aim my butt over that way a little bit more. But that's what they're used to. I mean, the I horses know. have raced a lot because right. we're getting a leg up as they're walking. Well, as they're walking, the I mean, if they're so. walking, it's bonus points. I mean, they're usually not even walking; they're <laughs> doing something more than a walk sometimes. Yeah. Right, jigging or yeah, yeah. <laughs> faster than a walk. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to go now to Sarah, uh, to Caitlin. Like last week, Caitlin, we saw Charles doing this. You know, he was cantering around like a star in the mud. <laughs> right, he was. Yes, doing I think. All yeah, this. and that was our. That, that was his first uh, time showing at Split Rock. So he ended up showing about five or six times throughout the course of the two weeks. And this was the first, the first time. Yeah. He was, he was slogging his way through the, through the muddy courses. Yes. He was <laughs> being a star in the sunshine and he showed indoors as well. Mm -hmm. um, and taking everything in stride at the horse show. So what happened this week? Now we were going to try and get uh, Char uh, Charles on this week, but unfortunately, yes, but he's also he's a mess. He um, he got back, you know, at seven p.m. last night, and one of the grooms showed me a picture today of him passed out, just completely passed out <sighs> on his side. Uh, so he's happy to be home, and um, he was he was great. So I ended up showing three times. Um, we had our best day probably last Thursday, I believe it was Thursday. Um, and we did equitation, which is not my strong point at all. Well, but we got, looks um, like you did pretty well. <laughs> yeah, we ended up getting third in the under saddle. And I mean, we, we hit all of our leads, our sitting trot. Um, I have to give a big shout out to the assistant trainer at Elite Sport Horse because she has been working with us on our sitting trot uh, for months and it, it all showed up. Um, the first under saddle, we did our first under saddle a few days before this and I was a bit nervous. So we ended up, um, we picked up the wrong lead the first time, but in, uh, in the equitation last week, we got everything. So that was really exciting because it was also the first day that my boyfriend was at the show and he was able, uh, he was filming and he was able to see that happen. <laughs> it was really nice. And what is, what is this picture here? This was, I think that was um, last week, like last yeah. Tuesday after he had shown with my trainer and in the indoors and, okay. um, and yeah, he just looks so cute with his braids. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Very nice braids. Yeah. So yeah, he was a he was a superstar, but we are very happy to be home now. And then we'll get he'll get a bit of a break. Um, I don't love overworking horses in this Texas heat and humidity. Um, and so the next show will probably be a local show in September. Um, and then, but we'll just we'll keep working. You know, every week um, he'll keep being ridden by myself and my trainer, and hopefully um we'll move up uh hopefully he'll be doing the the two six in the fall so nice and we'll celebrate our our one year anniversary together in september <laughs> excellent so what did you learn about charles this past this past week while you were at the kentucky show oh my goodness oh, um toughy that he was well i think it was that he was the horse that we always thought he was we have definitely had some ups and downs after our first show in May, he was amazing, but then he came back and we dealt with, I think some, um, some behavioral issues also connected to ulcers. And again, oh, you when, think he's got ulcers. You think he's, yeah, he was, yeah, he, yeah he's been on, um, gastro guard for yeah. about a month. Um, he internalizes. So again, he is not the like jigging, type of x race horse right but right. but we have pretty much figured out he internalizes um nervousness so um uh, and you know he doesn't stress himself out that much but enough to and and i happen to 
believe that most performance horses due to the stresses and the traveling and the, I think it's just a good idea to be on stomach um, maintenance or omeprazole in general, especially during very stressful times. Yeah. So, so he doesn't show, he doesn't show the stress out by getting tense and jigging. He, right. he keeps it inside and exactly. that's what's causing these ulcers. Is that exactly. What yeah. So what, so what I learned about him was that he is the horse we thought he was when yeah. I, when I adopted him, when he first walked off the trailer, he is the sweetheart, easygoing, um, just cool guy who kind of wants to be your friend, um, maybe, and, and is, is starting to like his job and understand the new job. Yeah. And what, here's another toughie. What did you learn about yourself? What I learned about myself is that I, I, can do this. Um, I actually went into, I was thinking about it when we started our drive back on Sunday, because it was exactly two weeks from the day that we had left. And I remember driving up there, of course, you know, it's um, about almost, it turned out to be about 20 hours driving time in total. So a lot of times just sit there and think. And I was thinking, I may not even show um, I, I might not compete with him. Like, I don't want to exacerbate his nerves with my nerves because I always had really bad nerves, um, show nerves growing up as a child and still continue to deal with that. And, um, and so my plan going into it was I might not even show. And um, I don't know. No, if you can, you mean you can enjoy your horse without going to the, a horse show and getting a yeah. ribbon? That's what yes. you're saying, right? Yes. But yeah. then, yes. So that was the first thing. But then the second thing, and like putting his his well-being first, whatever was best for him. Right. Um, but then the second thing was that we we are a team and that we can do this together. Um, and that went in the equitation definitely solidified that. Yes. I mean, and that's, uh, that's your f first. I mean, you're not even a year together. So it's, yes. it's going <laughs> to blossom from here, isn't it? Yes. Right. Um, so your next steps, you're going to take, let him have the rest of the summer off. It sounds like, I mean, not let the summer off, but maybe uh, not go to horse shows. Until yeah. September yeah. Not and, horse show. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, but just kind of keep, you know, keep them fit, keep them, um, right. keep working on our flat work because yeah. our, our flat work is, is what I mean, we kind of always known our jumps are amazing. Um, which, you know, I've, only been jumping for about five years. I picked it up in my twenties and our, our jumps are great. And they feel, I, I feel so comfortable and natural, like seeing my distances on him, but it's the flat work. And we've kind of always known that. So it's awesome that it's making me go back and reevaluate and really put that work into the flat work. So we'll keep working on our flat work and then um, we'll do a few local shows, hopefully later in the fall. And then the plan is to go to, World Equestrian Center um, in January. And where's that the World Equestrian Center? That so is for the, people the who one don't that they know. opened up. Yeah, so that's the one that they opened up in Ocala this year. That's going to um, be so great. We went down to Florida a couple of years ago when they were building that, and it, okay. it's, it's it's huge. Yeah. Yes, our our barn. Um, they took a few horses this year. Charles and I were just getting started, and and it was of course even a little different. Um, this past January because of COVID, but it was the right. first year that they had it opened up and everybody just said, I've heard so many people, at least 10 people describe it as like Disneyland for horse people. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So we're going to, thank you so much, Caitlin. We're going to let you go. We're going to carry you. on with Sarah here and um, we are going to see you again soon. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you so thank much. You. Good luck with your Bye. Time. Thank you.